Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and today I am solving a two Sudoku by Philip Newman. The first of these is a classic Sudoku. So these were originally posted in GAS on Thursday, May 30th, 2024. This is called The Naked Truth, and there are two things about this that are kind of fun. One is that it has a very similar, I don't think identical, but similar pattern of given digits to a famous classic Philip Sudoku called Tatooine Sunset which is pretty well known in the classic Sudoku world, is known for requiring you to find and use a lot of swordfish to make eliminations. And a swordfish is a classic Sudoku technique that is not something you will ever see in a gas level classic puzzle. It is a bit advanced, not the hardest thing out there, but a little bit complex. So we're not going to be solving this one with swordfish. This is a very different puzzle with different givens, but in largely the same places in the grid. So this is just a classic Sudoku, placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each heavily outlined three by three region. The second thing worth noting about this, it is called the naked truth. And that is a cheeky little nod from Philip to the fact that to solve this, we are going to unusually be primarily driving our solve by finding naked singles. And a naked single refers to a cell in the grid where every digit except one already sees that cell. In this case, this orange cell is a naked six because we already have in the row and the column one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. So the only thing that could ever go there is a six because we have to place a digit in every cell. And that's the only digit that we could viably place there. And so we're going to carry on looking for more naked singles here for a little bit. So in this row, we have one, two, three, five, and eight. So we still need four, six, seven, and nine. We have a four, six, and nine in this column. So the only digit that can appear at their intersection is going to be a seven. Now let's look at some of these columns. So here we're going to need a one, a five, an eight, and a nine to finish the column. So those can't be five, that can't be an eight, that can't be a one, that can't be a one, that can't be an eight. I don't think that was where our next one was actually. Okay, so here we need one, two, five, and eight. Ah, this is the next one. So we have two, five, and eight in this row. In the column, we need one, two, five, and eight. So that's gonna be my one. And that will let me finish this entire column. And I can eliminate one here, eliminate two here, five here, and eight here, just based on what's already in the region. Now let's look at these fairly restricted rows here. So here I'm going to need a four, a six, and a nine. That can't be a nine, that can't be a six. And here I'm still going to need a three, a four, and a nine. That can't be my four. And that's all I get to eliminate right there for now. This column is also pretty restricted. I still need a four, a five, a six, and an eight here. So this is either a four or a six. This is a four or a five. This is a four or a six, because this can't be a five or an eight. So in fact, that has to be a five and that has to be an eight to finish the column. That A is going to go back and resolve all of this stuff. So what else can we do here? So in this region, we need one, two, three, and seven, right? And we actually have a hidden one. This is the first hidden digit that I'm explicitly calling out in this puzzle. And what that means is that in the region, there's only one place that I'm allowed to put a one because ones see all of these cells. We eliminate one there and then that's a one. And now we have a hidden two because twos see these two cells. So two can only be positioned there. That seven makes that a three and makes this a seven. Okay, now these two cells are going to contain four and nine and that can't be a nine. So there's my four, there's my nine. These three cells now have to contain three, five, and six. Threes can't go there or there, so they're hidden three. That five makes this a six, and now this is a five. Okay, these have to be one, three, seven, and nine. That can't be three or seven, so I've got a nine and a one. Three, seven pair makes this a nine. That's also a nine for other reasons. Four, six pair here makes this a nine. These digits have to be four, six, and eight or six and eight. And the only one of those that could possibly be an eight would be there because of the eight up here in row one. These need to be one and two, which are resolved already. Three and seven are resolved also, by the way, I just didn't happen to be looking over there at the moment. This has got to be four or six, meaning these have to be seven and eight to finish the region. Now in this region, I still need a two, a four, a five, and a seven. I have a two and a five here, so they can't go there. So this is my two and five, and they go this way around because the five right there. Up here, I need three, four, six, and seven. That can't be a seven. 
Here I need two four and seven, so this must be a four. That's a naked four because I have a two and seven in the column, and that resolves this stuff. Can't have a four there, so it's a six and a four and a six and a three and a seven. Okay, so the six makes this a four, which makes this a three. And now these cells are one to five, six and nine. That can't be one or six, that can't be five or nine. And that's going to resolve in both cases because the five there and the one there. So that's a nine and a five, a six and a one. Finally, these cells are going to contain three, six, eight, and nine. The eight and nine go that way around and the three and the six go that way around. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's The Naked Truth. So now, Let's move on to the second puzzle. So this is a disjoint group Sudoku called come out and play. Now, what is this? In disjoint, we have normal Sudoku rules still. So we're placing digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each outline three by three region. And then on top of that, the disjoint rule says that if you look at two different regions, like say this region and this region, the digits that are in the same relative position. So for example, the top left digit in each region have to be different. Or another way to look at it is if I color all of the top left digits orange, for example, every single one of those orange digits has to be different from each other. So that has to be a set of one through nine. And same thing is going to be true for, for example, every single middle digit. Those all have to be different, all nine of them. So let's see what we can do with this. Disjoint can be very, very tricky, but it can also be very rewarding. And Philip is talented with setting them. So I, I trust that he's given us something fun here. So just by standard Sudoku rules, I can see that three and nine can't go there in region four, and they obviously can't overlap the existing givens. They have to go in those two cells. So these two digits have to be four and six, and the four can't go in the bottom right. So the four goes there and the six goes there. I wonder if I can do something similar up here because this region is pretty full. Those are going to be four, six, seven, and nine. That can't be a nine. Those can't be seven. And now because I have a four here, I can't duplicate four there. That's, that's not allowed. That's against the disjoint rule. So I'll eliminate four from that cell. But what else do I want to do here? By regular Sudoku, I have a hidden two in this top region. Two can't go there. Okay, I also need to place a 5 and an 8 in this top region, and because of the 5 and 8 here, they can't go in those cells, so there's a 5, there's an 8, and there's a 1, 4, and 7. Now by disjoint, I can't put a 1 in the middle here. Here I need to place a 3, 6, and 9, that can't be a 6, and is there anything I can do with disjoint? Not that I see yet. Okay, so these have to be 1, 5, and 8, those can't be 8, so that's going to be an 8. And now 1 and 5 is resolved by disjoint. So 1 tells me that I can't put another 1 in the top left corner, so that's going to be a 5, and now that will be a 1. These digits will be 3, 4, and 9, so that can't be a 3 because of this 3. That's not a 4, that's not a 9. And I'm curious if any of that gets resolved by disjoint already, and I don't think it does. If it does, I don't see it right now. So now I need to place 1, 6, and 7 to finish the region. 1 cannot go there for a few different reasons. 7 also can't go there because I already have a 7 in the top right cell. So now this is a 1 and this is a 7. 7 is going to go in one of those cells in this region, and I don't think I can do much with that. 2, 5, and 8 have to go into these positions. 5 is not there, 8 is not there, 2 is not there, just by regular Sudoku. But 2 also can't go here because it would match this 2. So that'll be an 8 with a 5 and a 2 in those positions. And then these are going to be 3, 4, and 9. That's not a 3, that's not a 4, and that is not a 9. And I have these very interesting pairs that almost look like they would end up being a deadly pattern if this was a classic Sudoku, but because this is disjoint, that's going to end up getting resolved by the disjoint rule. In fact, now I see how it gets resolved. That's a 3, so this cannot also be a 3 because those are in the same position. So it's 9, 3, 4, 9, 4, and 3. Okay, these are going to be 7 and 8 in my classic Sudoku. I get which way around those go. These are going to be 1 and 2. Again, those fall to classic Sudoku. And 5 and 6, same exact situation. Here I need 1, 6, and 7, which resolves by classic Sudoku. Beautiful. These are going to be 2 and 8, which resolve. That can't be a 6. It also can't be a 3 because I have a 3 in the center there. So that's a 9 and a 3 and a 6 and a 9 and a 3. Perfect. 
So now here I need to place a four and a nine, and here I need to place a three and a five, and that resolves already because of the five right there. So let's finish this region. It's time to approach it. So two, five, and eight. I can't have an eight there. That's a five and a two. Okay, that just resolves itself by classic. I gotta put a three in, and then these are gonna be one, six, and seven. That's not a one, that's not a six. And let's see if we can finish it by a disjoint. So seven can't go in this bottom left corner, so that's a one or a six. In fact, it can't be a one either, because there's a one in this bottom left corner. So that's six, seven, and one. Now that one makes this a four and a six. That's now a seven and a one, and I think that we are at the end of the puzzle. That was lovely. That was a very light disjoint puzzle that did not require a lot of really heavy disjoint scanning, but the disjoint rule was still there to kind of give me an extra little boost each time that classic seemed to start to run dry. I, that's how I prefer my disjoint Sudoku. I really enjoyed that one, and I hope that you guys do, did too. Um, links are down below, and please go ahead and check them out. I'll catch you next time.